All right. Welcome back, everybody. It is coming up to the end of the year here. It's uh, December 20th, and uh, we're having a little pre-chatter here on, on the call that uh, can't believe how fast the year flew by. I guess that's a sign we're getting older. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're, uh, we're just talking a little bit here about Steelhouse, which is a it's much more than a retargeting platform. It's actually a prospect generator as well. Uh, pretty cool. Gwen's been using it with uh, some of her clients, and she was just saying that she gets uh, pretty much on average like a four to one return. So every dollar spent in that ad platform brings back four, which that's pretty awesome. You know, when you can find a any sort of an ad channel where you can put a dollar in and get four back, that's that's incredible. So that's one of the things that they do as far as retargeting that we found to be really, really effective is the fact that it's segmented retargeting. And just like we talk about, you know, segmentation and act, segmentation of avatars, segmentation of messages, that really is the key. I mean, I don't know anybody that's running retargeting ads, normal retargeting ads, that's getting a four to one return. But when you make that, that shift, that tweak, and uh, you, know, you, you bring that across as, as a segmentation, that four to one is really, uh, really an incredible return. So to Gwen, you know, hats off to you. Congratulations on that. Um, that is definitely something uh, for everyone to strive for. Um, you know, like I said, when you can put a dollar into an ad spend and get four back, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, here, here's another thing too. I don't know if I, I don't want to, you know, give out too much info about, about what you're doing there, Gwen, but she, her, her client is often not happy with that. <laughs> like, and you're like, you know, you, you just, you just want to backhand them. It's like, oh, I have um, verbally in a, a way because I'm doing the math for him. Yeah. Yeah. But and and when the, he's, the, the problem is he's a reseller. So he says he's only getting 15 to 20% of that. Yeah. So when you do the profit margin, if he's getting 15 and he's got a, five for like uh, one to five um he still is losing money <laughs> yeah and that, so i'm like but that is a strong return <laughs> yeah yeah it's like when you think about that when you can put a dollar in and get four or five back and you're still losing money you might want to rethink your business model <laughs> i mean that's crazy we were kind of hammering that again yesterday with him. Yeah, yeah. You know, and again, that that's another key point that comes back to the very first step in ACT is, you know, what do we do? What's the first step? It's identifying the profitable segment of the market. And that's a reason why, because if you don't have enough profit in the segment that you're going for, it's like all the rest of the stuff is just doomed to fail. Even in this case, you know, four to one, people would just like, most everybody I know would do backflips to get a four to one ratio on a return. And, and they would kill it. They'd make so much money, it'd be ridiculous. And here you got this guy, four to one, five to one, he's still losing money. You know, that's, that's a problem with a business model. <laughs> so again, you know, that's why it's so important that you really, when you're setting up your business structure and you're, you're figuring out what market to go after, what products to offer, all of that stuff, you've got to be focused on a profitable segment. Really, really key importance there. You know, if you've got something that, that has no margin in it, you know, how are you going to advertise it? How are you going to spend the money to drive enough traffic to make enough sales uh, you know, when you have a negative situation, <laughs> you can't make that up with volume. <laughs> you know, that's, that's crazy. 
but uh, you know, anyway, it's just, it's just something to think about. A lot of you have digital products, you know, you've got digital stuff to sell and that's, you know, that's great. Cause that's like a hundred percent profit margin. All you've got to do is just figure out your pricing of how, you know, where you have to price the product in, you know, in terms of how much do you have to spend to make a sale and, you know, this thing, it's all about the math. It's all about the arithmetic is the answer to scaling up. You know, it's the answer to getting to your freedom number. You know, I'm sure you guys have all done the freedom formula by now and you figured out what your ideal lifestyle would cost, you know, on a monthly basis. And once you figure that number out, getting there is, is easy math. It's just figuring out, okay, what do I have to sell? how much profit is there in each item and then you divide that into your freedom number and now you get the number of units that you have to sell you know so if you let's say you've got you know a hundred dollar item that you're selling and it costs you it, it's a digital product so there's no product there's no hard product cost i'm just using this as an example so you've got it, it costs you fifty dollars to make a sale so $50 worth of traffic, you can make a sale for a $100 item. So you've got $50 of profit in a sale. Once you get that number and you figure out what that is for your particular business, you know, you're, you're going to have to figure it out sooner or later. It's what does it cost to make a sale? I'm not talking about selling this stuff to your circle of friends or inside a mastermind group. That's a huge problem. People get into, you know, a mastermind group and they want to sell to all the people in that little circle, but they have no plan or no idea what's going to happen when they hit the end of those rails, you know, and then they get out in the real world and they're like, this stuff doesn't sell like it did to my friends. Well, yeah, obviously <laughs> cold traffic. I'm talking about cold traffic, bringing your ad, bringing your product out to people that don't know you and have never heard of you and no, don't even know you exist. Those are the people when you, you need to get those numbers. The only way you're going to do that is with traffic. You know, you're going to have to buy it or get it organically. The organic is the long haul. That's the long road. I would prefer that you just go out and buy it first. Get your numbers figured out. Figure out, you know, how much does it cost to make a sale? And at the end of that, is there enough profit in it? Because if there's not, then you might want to find a different product or you might want to reprice or you, you've got to change something. You got to get either a, a cheaper traffic source. You've got to get a higher conversion. You've got to move, move the math around so there's money at the end of the day for every sale. Uh, the other thing you can do if you can't make money on the front end, if you've got an item that you just, you know, the sale price is what it is and you can't get more than that and the cost of getting a sale is at that or above, you can still make it work if you've got a back end. If you've got upsells on the back end, if you've got long-term client retention that brings you money on the back end, that's another number to formulate into your, you know, when you're figuring out your numbers, that's another important one is what's the lifetime value of a customer? Maybe your, maybe your customer acquisition cost on that $100 item is $150. Let's say you had to spend $150 to drive enough traffic to make one sale for a $100 item. Obviously, first encounter, first sale, you're in the hole, 50 bucks. So if you don't have a back end that will make that up, you need to walk away. That's a, that's a loser. But let's say you can lose 50 bucks on the back end because the following month you have a recurring deal and you make the 50 back. So you're two months in now for a break even. You, you need the numbers of how long that customer will pay the recurring number. If they'll pay on average, you know, a year and it's 50 bucks a month and you break even in the first two months, now you've got 10 months at $50. So that's a $500 return on $150 investment. So you can look at it in that way. So those numbers are really important. It's, it's important to know what your initial 
client acquisition cost is. How much money you had to shovel out to make the first sale. And then of that sale, you need to know how much more can I sell this person? How long will they stick on average? And how much is, you know, your back end follow up products? And, you, you know, you need to figure those averages out. Once you get those and you know, okay, there's X amount of profit in every sale now. Even if I have to wait a year to get it, that's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly fine. Um, that is a good investment strategy when you can put in 150 days today and within a year, you're going to make a $500 return on that. That's a pretty damn good investment strategy. You know, people can become millionaires with that investment strategy very, very easily. So that's, uh, that's why it's so important to, to understand and know your numbers because when you get that number and you know how much profit there is, you take that back and you put that calculation into your freedom formula. And now you know how many units you've got to move, how many units you've got to move every month to achieve your freedom number of what it costs to, you know, to live your ideal lifestyle. So again, it's all really simple math, but without doing the legwork up front and knowing and understanding those numbers, that's where most people fail. They say, I can't afford to spend money to, to buy traffic. Well, then you need to go get a job because this is not for you. <laughs> you know, business is about putting money out to get money back. You know, no matter how you slice it, if you've got a, a business model that doesn't follow that pattern, it's probably not scalable. You know, maybe you've got a small circle of friends and you can go and you can do face-to-face -face sales or whatever. Uh, those business models do exist, but they're not the type of business where you can scale that freedom formula. It, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't pencil out. So anyway, you know, that's kind of not sure how we got on that, on that whole subject, but I'm glad we did because it's really important. I think so many people miss the, they miss the mark and they, they lose interest in driving the business to the point where it's a success. So many people will do all this work, they'll spend all this money and then they give up. And the reason they give up is they, they, they took their eye off the prize. You know, the reason that every one of you do what you do, you know, whether you're in a job and you're trying to get into business or you're in business or, you know, you're all in, it doesn't matter. There's one reason why you're here and there's one reason why you do what you do. And it's freedom. Whatever that means to you, that's what it boils down to. That's what drives every entrepreneur. Uh, it's a little different for females and males, but it's still freedom. You know, with, uh, with females, and this is something important to understand when you're marketing and how to create messages to specific markets. If your avatar is a female, one of their primary primal drives is uh, its security. You know, they're very keyed in on security, whether they know it or not, it's underlying, it's just there. You know, it's, it's in, ingrained into females. Now, that is not a 100% rule across the board because there's some females that are very entrepreneurial spirited and they cross the bounds of what drives the men in that space. So again, it's not 100%, but you can look at it as a general rule if you're marketing to women and not high functioning entrepreneurial women, other women. If you're marketing to them, freedom is a primary driver. If you're marketing to men, the males, what their primary driver is status. You know, it's significance. It's the fact that they are ahead of everyone else. They're leaders. They're looked up to. They're respected. And again, it's not 100%, but it's pretty darn close. It's a primary driver that if you've got that running through your blood, then you're very compelled and pulled toward the entrepreneurial side. So understanding that, that's one of the things that Frank Kern really figured out. He understood that when he marketed the market of the mass control product. You know, I don't know how long, that's over 10 years ago. 
but he keyed in on that factor of significance that the guy, you know, he used his example was he called him Bob. His avatar was Bob. And, you know, he was a, a bank teller and, you know, he detailed out the, you know, the exact guy he was hunting for. And that guy fit almost everybody that was in a day job that had that entrepreneurial blood running through their veins. And he keyed in on, on their exact desire, you know, the, and, and it was purely significance. He changed his entire persona to become the guy they wanted to be. He turned himself into a surfer. You know, he hangs out at the beach. Everybody loves him. You know, everybody wants to know how he does what he does. That is significance at its core. And that's what he drew everyone in with. And understanding that, he was able to create that marketing message that got people, you know, what's the first thing? Create demand and desire for what you've got. He turned himself into the character that Bob wanted to be so he could do that. Bob wanted to be him. That's how he did it. He brought it across just that way. So, you know, that's, and again, he, he wasn't marketing to women, although a lot of high functioning women bought the product because like I said, high functioning women, entrepreneurial women, they broach the gap. They're looking more for the significance than the security, like normal women, average women uh, that are not entrepreneurial spirited which there are a lot of them. So anyway, really important that you understand if you're hunting, you got to know who you're hunting. You got to know what they eat. You got to know where they eat. You got to know where to intersect them. So, you know, and that, this, this all just spreads through the whole thing. You know, when you get to traffic, how important is it to know where your avatar is, what system they're on. Are they on Facebook? Are they on Twitter? Are they on LinkedIn? Because if you get it wrong and you show up in the wrong place, they're not going to be there to meet you. You know, with search, you know, I've been in search since the beginning. You know, everybody considers me one of the top search guys. Search is great for a handful of people. And those handful of people that match the criteria it's based on their avatar. If their avatar is aware of what they have and they're searching for it, then there's nothing better than search. I guarantee you it is the best traffic form on the planet because they're in process. They're actively looking. And if you show up that given time, you're in the time when they're in the making the, the decision making process to buy something. You cannot intersect them at a better point in time. So search is phenomenal for that, you know, for that criteria. But if your avatar doesn't know, they don't, sometimes they don't even know they have a problem. You might have something great that would really help them uh, significantly impact their life, but they don't know they have a problem. They don't know they need it. They don't know it exists. Search will do nothing for you if that's your case. So if you're doing a bunch of search engine optimization and you got a product that's unknown and nobody's searching for it, you are wasting your time. You know, again, it's, it's that Intel. When you're doing this, you've got to have that Intel. Like if you were going to, I go, people assume that I like to fish because, you know, I've got big fish hanging on a lot of my walls. I've got a lot of fishing stories. Uh, every one of my fishing stories is around, catching a bunch of fish so people assume that i like to fish well i that couldn't be further from the truth i hate fishing fishing is the process of trying to get a fish i hate that what i like is i like catching fish and if you want to catch fish and you want to do it on a predictable basis one of the things you've got to do is you got to find out where those fish are and you've got to intersect them because that's a big ass ocean out there and there's a lot of water and there's only a handful of fish. So like that needle in a haystack, you know, would you like a magnet maybe to find the needle? <laughs> would that make it a little easier? You know, that's what you got to look for is where's the magnet? You know, where's the intel? How do you find what you're looking for faster? 
And it's, it's all about understanding who you're hunting, you know? So if you guys are not doing the exercises, if you haven't gone through the avatar exercise, you're really shooting yourself in the foot. You know, the timeline that is critical. It's just, it's absolutely crucial that you do that. You understand where your person is, how they're feeling. If you don't, you'll never be able to write effective copy. You'll never be able to get, you know, create a headline that's going to grab them and pull them over to your landing page. And if you, don't, if you can't do that, then you might as well pack it up. You have the best landing page and the best funnel in the world. If you can't figure out what drives them and hook them and get them into the process, you're done before you even start. So that's why the stuff's so important. Um, anyway, if you guys have questions or anything, feel free, you know, unmute yourself or put it in the chat. I'll open the chat window up here so I can see. Uh, <laughs> Gregory says, yeah, you like to catch. That's right. You know, I, if I never go fishing again, I'll, that'll be just fine with me. You know, fishing's driving around in a boat, getting sunburnt, coming home with a cold. That's not for me. <laughs> I'm coming home with some fish. <laughs> in Puerto Rico, I almost drowned it twice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, this, 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 this was good because um, we've, been, we've been going round and round about my issue about me fishing in the wrong pond and whatnot. Um, yeah. But what I've been doing lately is I'm, I'm going to other people's sites of who are, you know, there's, there's like a, there's like about maybe I would say a good two dozen people out there selling, trading, school, education, services, whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then I go to Google and I say, okay, what is the review? What is the people? And I'm coming back and finding out that I'm always, I'm, I'm trying to see where is their shortfall? I mean, they come across with this, like Jason Bond's a great example. I ran into him three years ago and he's very loud, very much attention getting how he was, went from a school teacher to becoming a great success. And ultimately the thing is when I go back and look at his review and it's like, he doesn't have great reviews and what it is, he makes promises to make to deliver performance but his performance is not any more different than what I've been doing with the family in the last four months. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then he makes promises about, well, if you don't do what you, you know, if I don't, if, if I don't, if I don't, uh, if you, if he, he makes promises on guarantee, the guarantee, the guarantee thing. And then people say, well, we want our refund. He has been very slow in refund. And he's also been very, very terrible in, in um, support. So what I'm coming to is that, I'm looking at all those people's pitfalls so that when I go to the market mm -hmm. and I know who my competitors are, I know their weak spots and then therefore yeah. avoid those pitfalls. I'm already avoiding the pitfalls because one, I am going to be showing off my performance, which is what I'm keeping track of. But also the other thing is I'm keeping it very simple. I'm not going into the elaborate stuff. <laughs> So yeah, that, that brings that brings up like a, a really good point as far as like when you're when you're in your own sales process, one of the things that people do is they will look at reviews and their process of deciding whether they're going to go with you. So they, they do look at those reviews. Let's say you don't have any reviews and you're just starting out fresh. What you can do is you can go to the other competitor sites and you can scrape their reviews. You could go and, you know, any site they've got reviews on, you can go ahead and, and you can scrape them, which is basically if you did it by hand, you'd copy and paste each one of the reviews into a document. Uh, there are scraper tools out there that will do that automatically for you and put it in one like text file. And then what you can do, you can run a, a keyword density check on it. And what that does, it, it looks at all the words and it'll tell you. You know, like this word showed up, you know, five times out of 100 total words, you know, so that's a 5% keyword density. And what I do in the reviews is I will separate them into good reviews and bad reviews. Like when I go to scrape, I'll scrape all the one star and two star reviews and I'll put those in one file and then I'll scrape all the five star reviews and I'll put those in another file. Because I want the best of the best and I want the worst of the worst. 
And then when I do that, uh, that keyword density check, all the words that are, are repeated over and over and over, they rise to the top. They come to my attention. Basically, what I'm doing with that data is I'm looking at that, understanding what the language is of the people that are unhappy. And I'm looking at the language of the people that are very happy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the words that are coming out positive, and I'm going to put those into my sales copy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the words that are, are coming up when they're unhappy, and I'm going to use those to address objections. I'm going to say, you know, if you've ever felt like this, and I'm going to be using that terminology, and I can say, you know, you've probably been working with my competitors because that's exactly how they operate. We're different. This is how we do it. And you can anticipate those objections by looking at the bad reviews. It's a great way to do it. If you're new to the market and you don't have reviews, go out and, and use your competitors' reviews. You know, understand, learn from them. Because if you look at all of their bad reviews and you understand how to do it better, you'll never get those bad reviews. You can sidestep that process of reputation management because you did something that the, your audience didn't like. You know, a lot of people do that. They don't even know it. And that's hard to unravel. And if you get, you know, a bunch of negative reviews, that's hard to get rid of. You've got to pile a ton of good ones on top of that to bury it. So <clears throat> I, I highly recommend you, you sidestep that at, at all costs. But the, the conversion factor of understanding the language of the unhappy versus the happy people in that market, that's huge. That gives you a huge leg up, you know, a huge advantage over the competitors because they're not doing that. You know, they're, they're just not doing that. That also comes back to an aspect that Google loves, it's user experience. When you speak the language of your prospect, they stick on your site longer. They read more because you're, you're speaking their language. If you're speaking like technical jargon that's hard to understand or you're using wording, I got, uh, I got a, a couple of Christmas letters from people that I'm their client and I was reading that, you know, they send out a Christmas letter every year and I'm reading this and I got one from a, a financial advisor the other day and I'm reading it and it's at a level, he's speaking at a level that is like people that are, are so highly educated that, you know, they would, they would eat that up. You know, it's like at a literal level beyond 99% of the population. And I'm like, man, this just looks like, you know, for me, trying to read it, you're trying to, you know, it's making you think, what the hell is he talking about? What the hell does this mean? And if you're not on an on a ultra high literary level, that's not your language. So, you know, he blasts that out to his whole user base. What's going to happen when another financial advisor comes in and, and hits his audience with something they can relate to? You think he might lose some business because he's not speaking the language of his, of his people? You know, that's important to, to, as far as client acquisition is one thing, but client retention is another. You know, if you understand your audience, your base, your group, the people that are paying you over and over and over, and you resonate with them, they're going to stay with you longer. You know, the idea of someone else coming in and taking them away from you would be ludicrous. You know, but if you're not connecting with them, if you're not hitting, if you're not, you know, connected to them on a level that's hard to break, they're going to be easy to lose. So that's, that's just, a, you know, another example of that. Um, another thing in, in like competitive research, if you want to know, like let's say you've got some big competitors and you're new to the market, you don't have your own data, you can leverage the competitor's data. There's a site out there called similarweb.com. So just like, a, just like it sounds, similarweb.com. And you can put in a URL from any, any place you want. You can put a, a competitor's domain in there. You can put your own domain in there. And what it'll do, it'll run a stats report on their traffic. 
and it's awesome. I don't know how they get the data, but they can tell you how much traffic's going to that site. They can tell you the breakdown of where the traffic's coming from. Like they can tell you there's a bar graph for percentages of traffic, like how much, what percent is coming from search, what percentage is coming from email marketing, what percentage is coming from social, what percentage is coming from referral links. You know, it, it breaks it all down for you. And then in each one of the breakdowns, it has another breakdown of how they got there. Like the search stat, for instance, when you look at the search breakdown, it'll tell you what keywords people typed in, you know, the most searched terms to get people to that site. Data is really valuable. You know, if you're looking at social media, it'll tell you what channels is bringing in the traffic. Like let's say 25% of their overall traffic is from social. And then it'll give you the social breakdown and it'll say of that traffic, 50% is coming from Reddit. Now that tells us a lot. What that tells us is it's a young audience. You know, that tells us it's millennials because they're on Reddit. If it says, you know, 90% is coming from Facebook, that tells us something about their fish. It tells us what they're eating. They're older. It's an older audience. You know, it's, it's like back to the, the, the fishing story. You know, if I'm going fishing, the first thing I'm doing before I fuel the boat up is I'm gathering intel. I'm talking to other people. I'm looking at where fish are being caught and I'm calling the commercial guys and I'm asking them, what were those fish eating? Because those commercial guys, they cut the bellies open. It might sound a little nasty, but that's one of the things they do. They cut the bellies open to see what the fish are eating. Now, to a commercial guy, it's not that important. I don't really know why they do it to begin with, but they do. Maybe it's just in the fillet process, but they know what those fish are eating. Now, they're netting the fish, so it really doesn't matter what they're eating. But to a fisherman, if I know, hey, those guys are eating anchovies, I don't want to show up with sardines because that's not what they're eating. You know, if they're eating red crab and I show up with, you know, anchovy, that's not what's on the, on the menu. So my chances of catching that fish are diminished radically because I'm not bringing him what he's eating. You know, there's now there's certain things like squid. I know squid is like candy for fish. So if the fish, if all they've got is anchovies and sardines and I show up with squid, I'm going to be a superhero. <laughs> so, so knowing that, understanding your market, you know, knowing what's their candy and you show up with the candy when they're not getting it from anywhere else, you're going to kill it. So Anyway, you know, that's, that's some stuff that, you know, you want to think about when you're creating a marketing campaign. I do marketing just like I do fishing. You know, I want to understand who's my fish, what are they eating, where are they eating it, and when are they eating it? You know, back to the fish. Fish eat at a tide change. I know this. You know, they eat within an hour on either side of the major tide, chains, tide changes. So you've got four shots a day. So do I want to show up where they're eating, when they're eating, or do I want to be driving the boat over empty water while those fish are feeding? And then I get there and they're full. <laughs> what are my odds? My odds just diminished if I'm fishing that way. I'm fishing, I'm not catching. So marketing is exactly the same way. The more you can understand about your prospect, the more likely you are to catch them. You know, you got to know who they are. You got to know what they're, where they're showing up, what they're hungry for, and what's the candy. You know, what's the thing they can't resist? You understand those things, you're going to do very well. I guarantee it. You just got to have the right thing, offer it at the right time. You know, and, you know, back to the fish, they eat four times a day on the tide changes. Figure out your fish, when do they eat? You know, is tax season a problem? They're strapped for money. Don't try and sell them when they're not buying. Same thing. Don't try and catch fish when they're not eating. It doesn't work. So, so, you know, the more intel you've got, this really, I'm going to say this is a thinking man's game. 
but there's women here too, so <laughs> it's for you too. It's a thinking woman's game. It's, it's a thinking game. The people that use thought process, a logical thought process, are going to win every time. I guarantee it. There's no way around it. It's going to give you an advantage that other people don't have. So it's, you know, I really can't stress how powerful, you know, that whole concept is. It's just that, you know, I, in SEO, I talk about learn by observation. If you're going with the laws of nature, things are going to be easy. You know, uh, Stephen on the call here, he, he just got back in the group. He's, you know, he was away for a long time. We had a conversation the other day and I told him, you know, something that my dad told me long, long ago when I was young. Anything, he said, anything you're doing, if it's hard, you're probably not doing it right. You know, things are not meant to be hard. You know, if you're fishing and you can't catch a fish, guess what? It ain't hard. You're just not doing it right. You know, so you've got to figure out what's the right way to do it. And then it's easy. It's almost automatic. It's natural. You're in, you know, you're not fighting Mother Nature. You're taking a ride with her. And it's the same thing. I mean, people, nothing has changed about people and human nature as long as we've been alive. You know, it takes generations, you know, hundreds and thousands of years to, to change things. And so if we just look at, you know, what's been going on for the last hundred years, we're going to know everything we need to know. You know, like I say, the ACT program is based on the ad agency model. It has been working very, very well for over a hundred years. They've been using it. They have not changed the way they do it. They always do it the same. And it's why they have predictable success. You know, ad agencies, yeah, they're expensive. You're going to blow a lot of money to have them do the process for you. But they very rarely miss. And it's because they follow the same sequence. You know, they do the market research first. That's our analysis. That's the A in ACT. They do that. They nail it down. And then and only then do they go into creation, which sometimes they're creating products for what they learned in the analysis to match the market. Sometimes they throw out the products they had originally, the ones they intended on marketing. Sometimes they never even make it to market because their analysis killed them. So now they know what the market wants. They know the holes. They create a product that matches that. They create marketing. All the creation is done in the C part of act. And once that's done, once you know who you're fishing for, what they're eating, you've created the, you know, the mousetrap, and then and only then you drive traffic to it. And that's the system. It's ACT. And that's been going on for well over 100 years. It hasn't changed. It's not likely to change in our lifetime. So that's like, that's the nature that's going on. So you're either going to take that for a ride and make things easy, or you're going to fight nature. You're going to fight Mother Nature. And life is going to be miserable. <laughs> I can guarantee it. So I, you know, that's, that's the choice, you know, and I, you guys are already here. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just, hopefully I can sell you on that idea. So it makes your life easier, but uh, that's, that's the way it works. So anyway, um, I got one more thing for you to share here that I, I just came across this week. It has to do with social media, but anybody have any questions, you know, while we're on the, on the whole topic, it, it really like all of our, all of our conversations seem to be circular. They all come back to, you know, the process. That's, it's all about the process. If you want to make money and you want to market, you want to grab people's attention, overcome their objections and make the sale. It's all about that process. It's mostly about figuring out the research. You know, the research is the biggest piece of it. If you get at that figured out, the creation's easy. Writing the marketing copy is easy. It almost writes itself when you've done the analysis properly. And then the traffic, just a matter of figuring out where do you want to be? You know, where do you need to be? Where are they? Where you're going to intersect them? And just buy it. You know, it's for sale. Every big marketing channel out there, you can actually buy placements of ads in front of your, your ideal prospect. Hey, John. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. 
Hey, um, I, since last week I was checking out JB Zoo. Okay. Pretty impressed with the site. Um, yeah. Was trying to fill out some information. Do they have phone support there, or is it just all through email? Do you know? Yeah, most of these places are pretty much just you know online support. Um, really hard to find support numbers for most of them. If you do, you want to write it down. Because <laughs> you know? they, they all have them, but whether you can get to them or not. So if you ever do get a contact, like I've done this with all of them. I have, a, I have an actual file folder of, of names and, and uh, contact numbers. Uh, you know, like even AuthorizeNet. AuthorizeNet is a major payment gateway. You know, these guys are huge. You cannot find a customer service number anywhere on their website. They have it. I called my, uh, I called my, uh, my person that sets up merchant accounts and she gave me the number. And I said, why is this number not on their site? She says, well, they don't give it out. I'm like, well, that's brilliant. <laughs> they, they obviously don't want to talk to people. They don't want to spend their, you know, their yeah. money with customers. They have so. a great um, FAQ section. Mm -hmm. but there's so many forms and things to fill out to get started. Yeah. Once in a while you run into a glitch and then um, I didn't realize you could, you can um, be an affiliate for other products too, which is, um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. They've got some um, good uh, videos on that. Um, I yeah, just that's, look that's, at longer. Yeah. yeah. That's really what JV zoo and ClickBank and, uh, you know, all of those, all those big affiliate networks, that's really what they are. You can put your products in there, but once your product's in there, all the affiliates that are signed up in there, now they can sell your product. So right. you can sell theirs, they can sell yours. It's, it's like a clearinghouse of products. It's, it's so, real. yeah, I wanted to, you know, try to find out more about my product and how it would fit in. Um, but I, I, you can't really talk to anybody, so. Yeah, well, here, here's something. You just uncovered a moneymaker. Whether you know it or not, you just uncovered one. What you did was you identified a hole in the market because there's a bunch of people just like you that want to get their products onto JVZoo and ClickBank, and they're just as confused as you are. You are the avatar. Okay. So you could look at that and you could create a training program. Once you figure out the steps, you could create a training program and anyone that is even remotely confused or not, you know, not completely clear on exactly how to do it. The biggest thing that holds a lot of people back is uncertainty. So if you can eliminate that uncertainty and you can make it absolutely clear, hey, I'm going to step you through this. I'm going to walk you step by step. You're looking over my shoulder and we're going to get your product up on JVZoo in less than an hour or, you know, whatever it is, whatever your claim is. Right. You would sell the shit out of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that would be a great product to, you know, to put together. Um, and again, you know, identifying holes in marketplaces, that's where millions of dollars is made every day. Yeah, so, there's one guy who um, has a, a spreadsheet and he shows how JVZoo works, how the people go from the landing page to and mm -hmm. so forth. But um, getting to that point, getting your product out there. Yeah. Um, that's what I mean by that hole in the market. There's a, yeah. there's a gap. When you can fill a gap, you can make a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, that's why I created the ACT program. I was in a couple of mastermind groups and I saw a huge gap. There was like 99% of the people in the groups, I could see what they wanted, but they had no way to get there. Right. You know, buying stuff left and right, but they had no logical path of success. So that's why I put the whole ACT program together. I saw a gap in the market and, you know, it is, it has been a great revenue source for me. You know, okay. it's one of the, one of the best revenue sources in my entire business at this point. It's just the ACT training. You know, there's, for you guys on the call, there's, there's usually, you know, about a, a couple out of a hundred that show up on the call. 
you know, for all the people that are going through it and using it and getting benefit out of it. And every once in a while, you know, they'll hop on the call. I wish they'd all get on the calls because I can move them through the process so much faster. Right. Like when you guys have problems, get on here. That's what it's for. It's not just for me to, you know, rant rave about it. Sometimes I do that because I feel that's what's needed at the time. But, you know, you guys are free to open up. If you've got, if you're in a situation and you're stuck, that's what this call is for. So never be afraid to jump yeah. out. Tell I'll me keep going you're... through the site and see if I can uh, get more out of it. And uh, um, it's pretty, very interesting though. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Okay. Cool. Thank you, John. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Anybody else? Uh, anything you want to come out and ask? All right. Well, anyway, I got something I want to share with you. This is kind of interesting. I don't really do a lot in the social media realm. Um, a couple of things where I think social media is important and useful. Uh, I see a lot of people doing stuff that, that I, I just consider it a waste of time. But there's a few things about social media that I do find very beneficial and can be very profitable. And one of them, like social media, for instance, you've got a following. Let's take Facebook, for instance, or it could be anything. It could be Twitter. It could be Instagram. doesn't matter. It's just a social channel, whatever it may be. You've got a certain following, people that are following you. So when you post, some of them see it. They don't all see it. Let's face it. Nobody's on the social media all the time. So if they're on there when you post, you know, likely they'll see it. That is a very, very small percentage of the world. You know, out of, let's say Facebook, for instance, what is there's a billion people on Facebook or something? Well, how many are following you? A few hundred? A few thousand? You know, that's a very tiny fraction of that billion. So the way you can access the outside of your group without having to pay for it is to get your group to share it because you've got, let's say you've got a thousand people in your network, a percentage of them are going to see what you've got. And if you do it right, you can get them to share it to their network. So let's say, you know, 10% of your thousand people see it and share it. So that's a hundred people now have taken your message and put it out into their thousand. Now their thousand, if the message is built right, it will be shared and it will go viral. And this is how stuff goes viral. This is how people get, you know, huge boosts out of viral traffic is creating something that is shareable and gives instructions to share it. People do what they're told. They want instruction. If you don't tell them to share it, guess what? They're not going to share it. They got to really be inspired to share something if you don't tell them to share it. So when you create whatever it is, your post, your infographic, your video, whatever it may be, you simply tell them to share it. And you make it easy for them to share. You know, like if it's on your site, you can put the share buttons right on there. That way they can click the button and they can instantly share it. There's a lot of plugins to do this. Um, and this comes down to one of the things I was going to share with you, a resource that I found this week was it's called click to tweet.com. And what it'll do, it'll take content. And when you go over to, uh, to Twitter, you can paste the content into Twitter and then it will create a link for you. And you can put that link on your site. And basically, if somebody clicks the link, it's going to tweet that content out to their audience. So again, it's outside of your audience. It's not even people that are that you're connected to on Twitter. It's just people generically on your site. You're incentivizing them to click the link to tweet to get the information. Again, with marketing, figure out what's their candy. Why are they going to click the link? They're going to get some information that's like candy to them. So are they going to do it? Of course they are. They click the link. Now the link gets tweeted out to, to Twitter by the click to tweet link that you've created. Totally free. It's a free thing on a, on a website, click to tweet.com. 
And guess what happens? That, that tweet now goes out to all of those people that are in their network <clears throat> and that candy is offered. <clears throat> you know, that, that little piece of candy that they bid on is now offered to their whole network. Well, guess what? A percentage of their network, that's going to look like candy to them. So they're now going to start clicking it. And when they click it, it gets shared out to their network. Does that make sense? It's like the, the, uh, the, the hair shampoo commercial. I think it was Prell many, many years ago. They said, when you use Prell, you tell two friends and they tell two friends and so on and so on and so on. And the screen starts filling up with all these people's faces that all love Prell shampoo. And that's what I'm talking about. If I've always said this, you know, look at what works in the real world and then use the internet as your new medium to deliver that. It's just a new medium to deliver a message. So whatever worked in the real world, try it today on the internet. I'm pretty sure it'll work for you. So the whole idea of sharing it with two friends that share it with two friends that share it with two friends, your numbers go up crazy. You know, that is, that is something, if you want to get viral traffic, you want to get free traffic, figure out how to put a candy bait out there that has to get shared to consume the content. That's how to do it. I've seen, over the years, I've seen several plugins for WordPress come out, and uh, what they do is it, it's to incentivize sharing content. And what they'll do, they'll say, hey, I've got this really cool thing. And if you share this message out with your friends, I will share the thing that you want with you. They can't get access to the content before they share it. So they have, that's the key to unlock the content. You know, and sometimes it's like when they, when they buy something or they download something, it could be a free or paid thing. And then there's a bonus to it you get this bonus that makes what I just gave you 10 times more effective. But the only way you can get the bonus is if you share the content link and here's the share buttons, you know, here's the link to share it on, on Facebook. Well, guess what? They share it on Facebook out to their group. Their group's probably going to like it too, because people, you know, a lot of times people are like, like they hang out with like people. So it, it gets shared out and those people share it out. And it's just like the Pearl commercial, two people, and then they share it with two and share it with two. And now your network becomes enormous. Now you've got a lot of new people that are clicking to be your friend. They want to see your content. They're subscribing to your, you know, your YouTube channels, all that stuff. That's how you do it. Like in, you know, that's one of the factors I share inside the dominator training, how to dominate the SEO, you know, SEO dominator training. When I talk about content and the whole thing about likes versus shares, I say, forget the likes. Who gives a rat's ass how many people like your stuff? Let them tell you they like it by sharing it. Because when they click the like button, all that does is that just tells your friends, hey, some people like your stuff. Well, <laughs> no kidding. You know, right. That's a no brainer. Of course, people are going to like your stuff that follow you. It doesn't really do you any good. It's the fact that they share it. That is a much bigger indicator whether they liked it or not. And that's, that's going to actually grow, you know, your whole group. That's going to grow you faster than anything. So, and again, that's nothing new. It's, in, it, it's been in the training for three years. I put it in there. I talked about that factor like three or four years ago. So it's, you know, it's, it's been in there, but again, you know, I like to, I like to bring stuff back around and refresh, renew. <laughs> Russ says, now you're talking. I didn't see when you put that in there, but uh, it was probably about the, about the viral sharing stuff. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that, that, it's the best way to, you know, to grow your, your audience. You can do it with everything. You can do it with YouTube. Like if you're in YouTube, the guys that are marketing in YouTube, they will tell you right at the end, you know, when they give you a good content video, they tell you, they say, hey, I've got a lot more and I'm coming out with good stuff all the time. If you click the subscribe button, you'll get notified every time I release a new video. 
They just told you what to do. They made it easy. You know, if they didn't, they're assuming you know to click the subscribe button. Well, guess what? Most people out there don't even know what it is. They're like, what am I subscribing to? You know, why would I click that? You know, they have no reason whatsoever to click a button. They don't know what's on the other side. But at the end of your video, if you tell them, I put these videos out like once a week. If you would like me to notify you every time a new one goes out, so you're the first to get it, you can benefit fast. And, you know, you can, you can get, you know, whatever it is, the benefit you're going to get every time I release one of these, go ahead and click, click that subscribe button. I'll put you on my list and you'll be the first one to get notified. How easy is that? How much more likely do you think it is for everyone that watches your video, they're going to subscribe to your video channel. Now you've got a channel of distribution. You can put information out and get it in front of eyeballs instantly, you know, versus just throwing videos up one after another on YouTube, expecting your audience to grow. You know, that's kind of like insanity. You know, so, so tell people what to do. You know, that's, that's a key thing. That's why call to action. I, I can't tell you how many sites I've reviewed where there's no call to action. There's a bunch of information, but there's no call to action. You know, if when, when one of the things, like one of the formulas, I forget which marketer came up with it. It was one of the copywriters. And Frank Kern used it a lot. He used it as an example of an absolutely brilliant way to move people to action is three-step process. And the three-step process, the final step is telling them what to do. You know, the first step is here's what I've got. The second step, here's what it's going to do for you. And the third step is here's what I want you to do next. And it works. It's a, you know, it's just a simple call to action. But if you don't have calls to action on your site, guess what? Nobody's going to act. If you don't have calls to action in your social media, no one's going to share. And if no one's acting and sharing, how fast is your business growing? You know, if you want your business to grow fast, you've got to tell people what to do. You've got to make it easy. You've got to get them to understand how they can benefit. You know, you've got to show up with that message and get it to them. So it's, you know, it's, it's really pretty simple stuff, but nobody does it. You know, it's almost too simple. It's almost like it's too easy. It's too common sense. There's no way that could work. Well. <laughs> I don't know that she could be further from the truth if that's what you're thinking. You, you just, you got to make it simple for people. So anyway, last shot here. Anybody got any questions? Uh, I'm going to wrap up with, I emailed you guys out the, the holiday schedule. Uh, next week I'm going to be traveling on Thursday. So I'm pushing the call up to Wednesday. I know that's the day after Christmas. But it, it will be our final last call of the year. So I'll be on there. Any questions you've got, you guys have, it might be a short call. If, you know, if nobody shows up, nobody's got questions, it might be a, a short call. So make sure if, you're gonna, if you need help or anything, get on that call next Wednesday. It'll be the last call of the year, 11 a.m. Pacific. And, uh, and then after that, our first call of, 2019. I, I, it's weird for me to even say that. <laughs> but our first call of 2019 will be Friday, I believe it's the 4th, because I get back on Thursday, so I didn't want to try and press it. So uh, we'll do Friday the 4th. And at that point, after that, we should be back on track, back on the usual schedule. So that's what's coming up. Uh, hopefully I will talk to you guys next Wednesday. Um, Merry Christmas, have a, you know, happy holidays, whatever you have planned, have a great time, great holiday season. If I don't see you, you know, next week, uh, happy new year and let's hit it hard in 2019. You know, a lot of you guys are up on the edge, so let's, let's push it over the top. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, dear John, and a happy new year. <laughs> Thank you, Gregory. <laughs>
All right, guys. Have a have again. Have a great holiday, and we'll see you next Wednesday. If not, we'll see you in the new year.